one more time, have what? Coping mechanisms. And the problem, the issue is, listen now, where you turn in the hour of crisis reveals what you were before the crisis. And so what uh, God's people did here, they found a river that will make them glad and that will bring them joy. This is the problem with most of our coping mechanisms is that they may bring happiness for a little while, but they will not bring any joy. You know what the problem, the difference in joy, happiness has to do with your circumstances, but joy has to do with something deep down inside, which uh, leads me and let me hasten on to though there's the reality of life's calamities, though there are the resources that we tend to turn to, uh, at the end of the day, we need a redeemer and it's it's not so much what happens to us, it's not only where we turn, but praise the name of the Lord. I want you to know that we need to turn is who we turn to, and I want you to know is that the ultimate disaster in life is that for you and I to go through life on this side of earth. And then we don't, and we forget that there is an eternity on the other side of life. And ultimately, when it comes to the, I want to call it the Redeemer, the ultimate disaster is life is, is going into eternity. Eternity is the word without a personal relationship with Christ. The ultimate disaster in life is going into eternity without a personal relationship with Christ. Uh, would you just give me a few more minutes? You see what the psalmist says in verse 7, the psalmist says, the Lord of hosts is with us. And then, don't miss this. We've read it so much and we've let it go over our heads. He says the what? God of what? Jacob is our what? Refuge. He started out in verse 1, God is our refuge. But in verse 7, he says the God of Jacob is our refuge. And then just in case you missed it, he closes out in verse 11. And notice what verse 11 says. The exact same thing says the Lord of what host is what with us. And the what God of Jacob is our refuge. And what the psalmist wants us to know, it's not accidental that he didn't say the God of Abraham is our refuge, although that's true. He didn't say the God of Isaac, but he said the God of Jacob, the God of Jacob. And in the passage that was read at the beginning of the message, it was the story of Jacob. Jacob, like many of you and many of us, grew up in religious homes. But Jacob got himself in a mess, as it were, that he could not get himself out of. Is there anybody here? You don't have to raise your hand. I'm just trying to send your spirit. The reality is be known that there's some catastrophe catastrophes, there's some crisis, there's some things that showed up in your life. And if you're honest, guess what? You at fault. Is that right? Uh -huh. I said, okay, yeah, okay, now I'm, I'm going to move on. That's why I said you don't have to respond. But the reality is, you know, there's sometimes we blame other folks for our stuff, but there's sometimes we get our own self in trouble. But what God, the Bible says that when, when uh, Jacob was going through this, that he was having a dream, and Jacob dreamed about, he had this dream, and the Bible said that the phrase Jacob's ladder, while he was dreaming, there was a ladder that showed showed up. The Bible says there in the Genesis 28 that the ladder was set up on earth, but the ladder stretched up in heaven. You missed that. One more time. The ladder was set on earth, 
but it stretched up to heaven. And the reason why it was set on earth but reached up to heaven was God's way of saying to Jacob, Jacob, I know that you think your biggest problem is on earth, but Jacob, I want you to know your real problem is in heaven. Jacob, I know you want me to get you out of the jam on earth and deal with your family situation, but Jacob, I want to do something in your life that will take care of you for eternity, no matter what happens happens on earth and Jacob had this dream but the dream was a real dream and friend we need to be sure of our relationship with God oh when I think about Jacob's dream there's a young fellow once said to his girlfriend he said I dreamed about you last night and naturally she was intrigued and wanted to know all about it and he says, I dreamed that I proposed to you. I wonder what that means. She responded and said, well, that's very simple. That means that you have more sense when you're asleep than you do when you're awake. Uh, well, I want you to know uh, whether that was a God-given dream or nightmare, nightmare, God, I'm closing, God wants you to be 100% sure. I say, God wants you to be 100% sure that no matter what happens to you on this side of eternity, you are certain of your salvation with the Lord. And friends, God is our refuge. I said, God is our refuge this morning. But God, and he may in his sovereignty allow more issues to show up in your life than you desire, but you can leave here today guaranteed about one thing, is that you know, that you know, that you know. God forbid that you have any more financial setbacks. God forbid that you have any more physical sicknesses. God forbid that you lose any more loved ones, but I want to let you know you can go to heaven without money. Yes, you can. You can go to heaven without a, a, a well, a body. Yes, you can. You can go to heaven even if most of your families already is in heaven, but you cannot go to heaven this morning without the Lord Jesus Christ. And so you need a redeemer. And as we prepare to close out in prayer, I just want to ask you, just want to ask you, are you 100% certain? Are you ready to move? The reason why the psalmist didn't say the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac, because Jacob's daddy's religion wasn't going to work for him. Jacob's granddaddy's religion and relationship with Christ was not going to work for him. But Jacob had to make a decision for himself to receive the Savior in spite of his situation. And so I wonder, would you stand at this time? and?